Welcome back to the Christian Life Podcast, where we have good conversation for practical Christian living. Today we are on episode number 14, and we are going to be talking about what it means to have your identity in Christ. We are your host, Michael Brazier and Art Nuremberg, and I'm I'm excited about this podcast. Um, when it's such a big issue in our world today, the idea of identity, we were talking a little bit before the podcast about how you we come to the conclusion that like when you were growing up you had set standards and you were always trying to right. identify with them but especially for young people now a lot of our cultural relevance and things that we held true especially like right. the 1950s 60s 70s right. have been washed away and eroded and so young people like my generation they have to find their identity they have to create their own identity right and that can be really challenging, especially when you don't have, um, well, when you can hear everybody else's opinion about your identity right. and um, and you're, you're concerned about people's perception of you and your own perception of yourself. Um, and when you're trying to do it without the Lord, like without Christ in your life, I mean, it's just a hopeless situation. Yeah. Um, and so there's a lot of people out there and culture talks a lot about identity. And it talks a lot about our um, who we should be and how we should identify and um, how we should love ourselves. But as Christians, I think it's important that we enter into this dialogue and this conversation and talk about what it means to have our identity in Christ, okay. um, especially for young people, because they're always fighting the game of like comparison and um, right. they have anxiety and depression about it. Um, and so I think this will be a really good podcast for young people, especially. Um or people who are searching, what is their identity? So, let I'm going to throw it over to you and kind of. Um, I think it's important to identify, not identify, to um, define our terms. Right. What right. are we talking about? Because everybody talks about identity. Um, right. So, yeah, take it from there. Okay. Yeah, that's the uh, important thing here is to, to get a lot of definition done because there are so many, <clears throat> excuse me, different uh, discussions around the whole idea of identity. Yeah. There's there's just a lot of said, and it may be true, but they're not using the same terms, you know. So yeah. even among Christians, there seems to be the idea of my identity in Christ can be used in different ways. And again, I'm not saying that one's right, one's wrong. It's just they're using their vocabulary differently. And so if if we're going to discuss this, it, it's important that we have a common. This is where we're going. Uh, I'm. I'm also with you on this one. I, I think it's an extremely uh, important subject in our day, and I don't think we can cover it today. So I yeah. might take a few times to, to go over it because I don't envy kids growing up today. I don't envy them at all. Um, growing up was tough enough, <laughs> uh, but to, be, to have to find yourself, and not only find yourself, but find the standard by which you measure yourself you have to define the, the measure and then test it to see if anybody buys it. Yeah, It is, um, human personality is fragile and it, it can't handle all that. And I think we're seeing it. I think one of the reasons we're seeing such a strange or such strange um, phenomena in our generation is because of a fractured soul that yeah. just can't find it and, and is desperate for it. So this is... Um, extremely important to me so the first thing i think that we need to think about when i'm thinking about identity i'm thinking about there's two sides to that on the one side there is the what is true concerning me but a whole nother side which has to be is how do i perceive what's true concerning me all right um i'm six foot two or i was at one time Anyway, <laughs> but at six foot two, I realized in church that I was taller than people because when we stand up, stood up to sing, yep. I could look over the congregation and short people couldn't. Mm -hmm. Okay, so in that particular case, my perception of my height and the reality, my identity as a mm -hmm. person who is six foot two, are pretty close to reality because I have a, a reasonable way to measure that. When we get to other features of our being, how intelligent are we? How, how, um, and again, let's face it, it's part of culture. 
how attractive are we? Oh. How how good is our personality? Those are harder to measure, and uh, we can have different perceptions. So um, I'm thinking first of all about this this whole matter of what is what is my real identity? You know, and and identity brings us down to a, just a really important matter. It's it can only be understood by relating it to another person. The reason we think about what is my identity is because we want to match up to what someone else yeah. expects from us. Yeah, there's a big herd mentality to it. Yeah. Like, you want to fit in. Like, yeah. You don't want to be the odd person in the no. group. Like, you no. want a community. You want people to be supporting you and around you. And so we're always trying to, like, perceive how are they perceiving us. Right. And how can I change to fit in better with them. right, and it's and it all has to do with with the people that are around us. So if we're going to think about our identity with, in Christ. We have to start with that. Yeah. Um, there's people I don't care about what they think of me yeah. on this earth completely. Um, people in Uruguay. Yeah. I will never meet them. They culturally, they would probably look at me. I have no idea of the culture of Uruguay, but um, suppose I was there, I wouldn't care what they thought of yeah. me. But I do care about what other people think of me. Yeah, As, you, it matters in your culture right. setting. So, um, if if you were to write a resume, okay, you write a resume as an identity. This I'm going to identify myself to a business, to a to an employer, attempting to get that employee. So here's the things that I would put down on that resume. What I write down is related to how I relate to what I think that person wants me to be and what's important in this relationship. Um, again, we'll take it at your, your generation right now. So you're, you're single. So if you're going out on a date with somebody, mm-hmm. your concerns, if you say, what should I, what do I need to be in this date yep. is a whole s- different. You're not going to write down the same things about your identity. You're concerned about different issues. Yeah when you're trying to get a relationship with a person than when you're trying to get a relationship with an employer. Yep. So that um, identity has to go back to that matter of who it is that I'm concerned about. And and I think that's that's a huge one in our day. I don't know, and I don't know, I don't know, because um, most of what we write down on that identity issue when we're thinking just what is my identity has to do with the culture that that you had imprinted on you when you were growing up i still think whether i like it or not like a person from the 1950s and 60s that's when i was young that's the culture so that the standards of that culture are still they're still deep to me so when i'm thinking about what should i be to people well, this is what I should be to people so that I tend to still wear certain things when I go to a wedding. Yep. That, culturally, that's what you because wore. Because it, it's important to me to perceive or to um, honor a bride a certain way. That's yep. what was trained. It's in there. Yeah. It's going to happen. All right. So my, what I want to be, what I, how I want to identify myself here is mm-hmm. determined by that. Um, you're in a different culture. Now, I was aided, as you said, and this is a big, this is why I think we need to take some time on this one. I was aided by the fact that there were real boundaries. Teachers taught you certain things. Teachers expected you to be certain things. Um, churches expected you to be certain things. Your neighbors expected you to be certain things. Okay, now we've moved to a culture where um, we, we've put a great deal of emphasis on unconditional love, which to this culture, as far as I can perceive it, and this is my own perception, unconditional this love in this culture is let me be whatever I want to be. And then when you're done, cheer for me. Yeah, You have to cheer. I can do anything I want, but you have to cheer. Yeah. All right, so... Um, that sounds great, except that it, I still, 
that doesn't solve the problem of other people's my relationship with other people. Yeah. I still have to ask, but am I getting there? Yeah. Are they doing it? And that's where I think we have a whole a whole generation that's just completely adrift yeah. because it has no direction. And as is a culture, yeah. I'm not talking about Christianity, but I'm talking about as a culture. Um, and so this becomes a big problem. Uh, so that's the first part. And the second part is your identity. People have to come to a fundamental identity. This is what I would look at it. Something which you become secure in. This is who I am, and I'm secure about that, which enables me to put up with the fact that there's a whole lot of people out there who don't like me, yeah. who don't look at it my way, yeah. who who think I'm wrong or think I'm ugly or think I'm all those other things. Yeah. And I have come to a base. Now, I don't think that's happening in this day. Now, that's where that identity in Christ comes. Yeah. But it also has to be related to relationships, all right? So that, again, before Pam and I got married, okay, there was a certain relationship with girls my age. Mm-hmm. I mean, you, had, you thought about them. You know, what does this girl think? What does this girl think? And you're testing the waters. Uh, when Pam and I got married, that all got kind of excluded because this relationship with Pam was so important. Those relationships stopped yeah. mattering. Yeah. It doesn't mean that I didn't care what other people thought, but their level went from yeah. here to she's up here and they're down here. Yeah. And, you know, I don't want to offend them, but I'm not going out of my way because I've, I've got the security of knowing I have a relationship with her. Now, what she perceives me to be mm-hmm. becomes very, very important. Yeah. And I think that brings us kind of close to the, the whole concept of, of what does it mean to be, to have our identity in Christ. Mm-hmm. When I put down on this list, what is it? It has both, this is who I am, but this who I am has to be related to a relationship. Yeah. That, is that making sense? Yeah. I don't know if this is making any yeah. sense. Yeah. Anyway. Because it's in relationship to, like as a Christian, our identity is related to who Jesus is. Because right. we've been completely identified with him right. in in his life and in his death and in his resurrection. Now we have certain things that are true about us right. with God, with the Father, right. because of Jesus. Right. But that relationship is the important one, is the one between us right. and the Lord Jesus. So yeah. And, and that has to become my mentality that um because of who the Lord is, I am now rightly related to God. And because this is the where we have to come to eventually, because I'm rightly related to God, it doesn't matter. It doesn't mean that I, I'm not affected by other people's opinions or I don't take them into consideration, but this is my security. This is where I go back to. We were relating, we were talking about it before uh, we started. I kind of think it's, it's like little children when they are first, when they're, they're little, all right, we're going to say up until, let's say, they're six or seven years old. Their whole world is inside of a home, assuming that they have a yeah. decent home. So if mama loves me, it doesn't really matter. I don't like it when Billy across the street yeah. doesn't like me, but I retreat to my home and it's okay. And, and Billy doesn't matter because ultimately my real home or my real relationships inside that home. And I think later on in life, uh, we, we it's just psychological development. You move outside of that home. Mm-hmm. And then this is all out here. And then Billy's opinion does matter. Yeah. But at the beginning, it's kind of like that. And I think that's, that's more or less what happens to us as Christians if we get hold of it. Because our relationship with God is right, and that's what's fundamental, um, I can keep other people's opinions in perspective. They don't finally affect my my overall outcome. It doesn't matter. I can say that. Mm-hmm. That's the way I, I perceive the life of the Lord. Yeah. How did how did he live? He had a relationship with his father. He said, "Okay, you all deserted me, but my father's still there." 
that that is so anchoring to his soul on this earth as a as a man on this earth mm-hmm. that doesn't ma- mean that he wasn't hurt when Peter betrayed him or Peter uh, denied him. It doesn't say that doesn't hurt, but he's still secure in his father. Yeah. That if 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 Peter steps aside, I'll, I will feel that pain, but I won't be disturbed. I won't be knocked off my course. Yeah. That's not an easy place to come to. That, that's that's why we need to talk about what it means to have our identity in Christ. It's easy to go through the list of these are the things that are true for me, yeah. but then not not respond in faith by saying, okay, because my relationship with the Father or with God is right, I can now live peaceably and, yeah. and lovingly with people who don't agree with me and don't like me particularly or, or yeah. don't think I'm all that important. It's, it's because you, you have to have, I have a position in Christ. I have to bring my perception into line with that reality. But it's so that the relationship with God can override all the other relationships that we have. Mm-hmm. I don't know if that's making no, any I mean, sense. It's really but, good. Because I think it's important to put that in perspective. Because it is true. You can say these things that are true about yourself as a Christian. Like, right. I'm loved by God or I am chosen or right. redeemed, or set free. All of these are true and they're important and they're important to understand. Um, but if you're not relating yourself to the Lord and putting that understanding that relationship as your central identity, right? Then, um, then the things that other people say about you can still not that they won't affect you, but that they can still hold you captive, yeah, they, yeah. Um, in That's a exactly sense, right. to to bondage in that sense of like other people's opinions are like so important to you, yeah. Um, and yeah. it's important to to put that. What are some of the key elements that I think? Uh, for people to come away with in their identity. Like what are, would, what would you say are some of those important ones to remember? You mean in um, identity in Christ? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's, that's, that is the important uh, feature. Um, this is the way it works out. Okay. I'm a lost man. Okay. I'm wrong with God. I, I am spoken to by the spirit of God and I come in repentance and faith and entrust myself to the Lord. Okay, when I do that and in that process, I'm I'm in Christ. I come into Christ. I am now identified before God the Father with him. Which means that he sees me in him, identifies me with all that the Lord is. Some of those the most important which we you think about immediately is the problem of my sin is taken out of the way, right? God hates sin. As long as it's in the way, there is no peace with God. But once that's out of the way, we call it justification. I'm, I have a perfect standing with God, which is not based on anything I did. It's not based on anything I did. Um, and and that, that's the first step. And we can see how this becomes a problem because, okay, that's true. But then I can perceive that, well, yes, but I'm such a poor witness or I, I just don't love people the way I ought to. That's probably true. That's probably true. And God isn't unconcerned about that. But my relationship, my identity is one of being totally loved. Yeah. Here I have unconditional love because there was nothing in me that drew it out in the first place, so nothing in me can can thwart it. Yeah. Once I entrust myself to Him, He saves. Mm-hmm. That becomes just a huge feature in in my experience. Yeah, and it's such an important one to remember because if we, is, and especially like the evil one, you can constantly you can be hammered on a lot of things like your guilt and this, but if you go back to um, the reality that you were rescued despite who you are right. and what you've done, like, because you've added nothing to it, um, to your salvation and Christ loved you while you were still a sinner and he right. died for you. 
and then you've been set free and you can live in the identity that you're completely justified in God. Yep. The father, he smiles upon you and there's joy in that relationship. Right. Um, because the father doesn't, I think we talked about this earlier on, like a good loving father, you may have messed up, but their love for you is beyond your, your yep. mess up in your right. life. Right. Like, I mean, if you have a, I don't have kids, but if you have wayward kids, then but you still love them. Like, yeah. because they're, that's part of it. And, um, and the father loves us as children. And so if you hold that um, true in your life, I think that's really, that's a yeah. huge one. And it, and that can help you overcome a lot of the things that people struggle with. And when you go back to that reality, that you are totally justified. You're totally made right before right. God. And, um, and what he says about you is true and that he does love you and there's right. joy in that relationship. Right. And he, and as, as a loving father, he will take the corrective measures. Yeah. See, I, I can, I'm, I'm secure, even though I might not like the corrective measures. Yeah. I know that he'll take them. He yeah, isn't going to desert me. He isn't going to leave me. He isn't going to, he isn't going to throw me off because I made a mistake. Um, he's going to do what's necessary yeah. to lovingly bring me back around because I am in Christ. And yeah. when I committed to the Lord, God committed, if you would, he, he made the provision, but at that point he commits to fulfilling everything he promised about my salvation. He is the one that's going to bring it to pass. I have to be. I have to live there. Yeah. Uh, and because that's so, then all of our other relationships, um, they can be put in place. Because, and this is where I think Paul comes in Romans chapter 8. Mm. Because I'm loved by God, and that, that sets up a love which is, is going to be eternal, that we talked about before i am eternally rich i am eternally secure i am going I'm, not because i am something but i'm in christ yeah. that's my identity and because of that i can live on this earth and i can do the will of god it's all coming out of who he is mm -hmm. we could go a long way down but even in in this discussion okay here we are we're talking what difference does it make that we're doing this? Yeah. Right? I could go home and say, ah, bleh, bleh, <laughs> you know, what difference does it make? Yeah. Well, the difference isn't because of anything I am. Mm -hmm. It's because we're talking about if I have a heart, which he's produced to serve him, then because of I got this identity in Christ, he will produce fruit. That's what he said. Yeah. He will do that. And this will have an effect. Because, again, it just will have that, that particular effect. Will it have effect on millions of people? I doubt it. Yeah. But I don't have to worry about that because I have an identity in Christ. Yeah. He doesn't love me because I reach millions of people. Yeah. He loves me because he loves me. Mm -hmm. And I can serve him. And if he chooses for one person to be blessed by this, praise God. That is completely in his realm, which sets me free again. Yeah. I, can't, I don't have to go back home and measure my identity in terms of my ministry, mm -hmm. which is inside of ministry is a big problem. Yeah. Measuring who I am, because I think this is, this becomes a big problem with the self image. Yeah. Um, and this is where the problem comes. Okay. I can talk to you about my identity in Christ, but then what happens to people is they're still measuring their worth by other things. They measure it by other people. So that a person, you can tell them all day long that they're complete in Christ, but I'm not smart. Okay. Yeah. But the not smart isn't in their relationship to God. It's in their relationship to people out there. Mm -hmm. What has to happen in our identity in Christ is we have to absorb this and say that the fundamental relationship is so secure. We have to aim at that security. And that it is set because of what Jesus did for me when I was completely ruined, when I was worthless. And knowing who I was, knowing my personality deficiencies, knowing the, the, um, let's see, attractiveness, intelligence, um, wealth, 
all the other things you could come up with that you yeah. could put on a resume of why I count in society. Yeah. Um, he knew all about, he knew that it was deficient, but he's loved me. And now I am totally sufficient in him to do what he wants me to do. Yeah. Not to do everything, but to do what he wants me to do. So that brings me to security. But if I don't go that route, then I keep measuring my worth. I'm asking the Lord to make me something that will appeal to people out there. And yeah, not going to happen. It's just not going to happen. I don't know if that gets confusing, but this is my concern, yeah. is that we hear this, but then we keep measuring ourselves by another relationship. And it has to do with a relationship with people, whoever they are. Does my husband love me or does my, do my children pay attention to me or do the people online yeah. give me a thumbs up or whatever it yeah. is that, that happens, however I'm measuring it. How do people then um, change that perspective in their lives? I guess, are there practical steps to change that, to intentionally um, go from you know, focusing on those relationships to focusing exclusively on this the relationship with the Lord. Well, again, I think this goes back to um, some of the things we have been talking about. Yeah. We have to actually take steps. God works yeah. within us both to will and to do. He wants us to do of his good pleasure. He wants us to think a certain way, but we have to do the, we have, we do have to take the actions. Yeah. Um, we have to recognize this is what I am in the Lord. And that that's, what's important. And, we already are programmed towards mostly towards people outside. Let's yeah. face it, we're all programmed <laughs> that way. We all care about what they're out, you know, what do they think of me? Um, am I part of the Because we all want to be part of the group. I mean, it's this way we were made. We were made as social creatures. We aren't made yeah. as, as hermits, all right? We were made to live with each other. And um, that perception is extremely important to us. But I have to put this one as more important. I have to make that. So I have to say it doesn't matter. This is, let's go back to the ministry thing. It doesn't matter whether or not I am accepted by thousands of people. It matters whether I am serving the Lord and loving him and living in this relationship. Yeah. When I begin to feel like, well, I am a failure because I have to say no to that. Yeah. That's, that's where there's, there is a certain, if I'm going to put on the Lord, I have to put off something. Yeah. If I'm going to know the joy of living as a as a child of God, I have to put off the attempts to find joy in being a friend to this to people out here. Yeah. Not the world, but just to, this is to everybody, mm -hmm. whether it's inside the kingdom or outside the kingdom. Yeah. Does that make sense? I have to make those choices. And I can't just say, well, it's just the way I feel. Well, the way I feel has to be adjusted to reality. Yeah. And if I will keep reminding myself, that's where the worship comes in, mm -hmm. the rejoicing in the Lord. Who is he? Hey, the Lord's seated on his throne today. Because he's seated on his throne, the kingdom of God is coming. And our little part here this morning, our little, <laughs> our little interaction here has something to do with that. And, and he will, by his takes, grace. Yeah, yeah. I was just going to say, it takes a huge weight off of yeah. us as humans. Right. Um, because people carry this massive weight, especially like in ministry. Like they can carry their whole ministry on their back. And, but uh, you're called to like put that on the Lord and you have to trust him with right. that regardless of like yeah. the ultimate effect. Because the effect isn't so much the issue. It's walking with him. It's trusting him. Yeah. And it's learning to live in this relationship with the Lord. Right. And it's imperative we get there because that's the only way I can live in love. Yeah. As long as I care about what people, how people respond to me, mm -hmm. and I measure myself in terms of that, I can't love them. I have to, I have to bend to them. Mm -hmm. I can't, I'm not free to be to people what, what they need because I am deriving something from them. But if I have a security in Jesus Christ, if I am secure in that relationship and know that whatever else happens on life, I have this, yeah. then I can 
serve you. Not for my own sake, but for your sake. Otherwise, I'm not really serving you. I'm trying to impress you and gain your favor so I'll feel good about myself. Yeah. And that's that's an easy place to get. <laughs> yeah. And that ultimately is like love of self because you're it's yeah. an inward thing. Yeah. But biblical love is self forgetfulness. Right. And, and that's the love that like Christ showed us. Right. So I think that's important to remember yeah. that. Because that's that is a practical action that's a tangible thing that comes out of our identity is fully secure in who Jesus is, it should lead to our ability to love other people because right. we're not worried about are they going to accept what I'm trying to offer them or like whatever it is there. We're not, our identity is not in their acceptance of who we are. Right. Our identity is in this relationship with Christ so we can love them unconditionally. Right. Uh, in theory, as Christ loved us. Yeah. So, yeah, it's, so it's, it's a, it's just a reality. So it's an important question. Identity in Christ is just yeah. huge. You know, and we have to grab hold of it. It starts off with that, but it, yeah. it it means that I'm complete. I have all I need, but I, I am loved. Yeah, that's a I big thing. Loved. People are always looking for love. Yeah, People want to be loved. Yeah. And, and culture is always trying to tell us that love is found by loving yourself. Yeah. Um, and I read a thing recently, and it said that the people that are always pushing like loving yourself Mm -hmm. are typically like some of the most unhappy people and they're willing to admit it because they haven't found true love of themselves yet and yeah um, because that's not where love is found it's not found in loving yourself um and i think it's important to yeah it's an impossible i mean and i feel for them but it's an impossible place to come to because the reason they had this a distaste for themselves before that they're trying to overcome is because they weren't matching the standards that people wanted them to match or they perceived that they weren't. Mm -hmm. Now they have to love themselves without changing. They still are short of the mark, and I don't think they can get that out of their mind. That they're they're saying this themselves, and they go to the seminars and let people pump them up with this, but when they walk away... They still don't perceive themselves as intelligent or beautiful or, or rich or or personable or whatever it is. And they're trying to love it the way it is, but it isn't work. It isn't so, working. And that's a huge thing that we as Christians can um, put out there, like to unbelievers and especially young people, because they're looking for something to find, to um, to find, to love them. I, I'm not explain that well but yeah. like but they're looking for love to be yeah. accepted and yeah. like as christians we can say but in christ you are loved like you are fully accepted. Right. how you come it does not matter because in jesus he is going to rescue you and he is going to change you and make you in him right um, in so and in the I lord i can i can help them and yeah. here's a way you can help them if see there this is a person trying to come to a place where they love themselves yeah because anyway whatever but if I am secure in Jesus mm-hmm. and in the, in the Father's love, then I can love them, and they begin to feel what it is to be secure despite yeah. who they are instead yeah. of trying to love themselves because of whatever it is. Yeah. And, and, but it's not artificial anymore. Mm-hmm. It becomes real because we can extend that love. And that's, that's I think, a big important part in our role in this day because yeah. people are adrift they won't all like us but we can help them yeah yeah that's a huge encouragement so i think we are basically out of time okay thank you for listening uh, to the podcast you can of course get all of our other podcasts on youtube spotify apple Podcasts. they're all there um you can follow across follow us on our social media uh on instagram and facebook and um twitter all of those um until next time may the lord bless you and keep you and we will see you again next week